Okay, drillers, big day on Friday. You asked for this clip, so I'm going to give it to you. We're talking about the articles, the Federalist Papers, the amendments, the court cases that you need in the presidency for Friday. So here we go. Federalist Paper number 70. There's already a YouTube clip on that. Go check it out. As far as articles, we all know Article 1 of the Constitution is about the legislature. Article 2 is about the president. One thing to remember about Article 2, though, is that the vesting clause... Uh, is a little bit different than in Article 1. Remember, Article 1 says that all legislative powers herein granted belong to the Congress, whereas in Article 2, it just says all executive power resides with the president. It, it is an undiluted vesting clause, so keep that in mind. Court cases, U.S. versus Nixon, which talks about executive privilege, says that executive privilege, which is essentially this idea that there is a zone of privacy around the president for he and his advisors, that he doesn't have to give up all of his private information and correspondence uh, to anybody who asks for it. In fact, the executive privilege does exist, but it's limited, and it tends to be limited to issues concerning national security, which is why Nixon eventually does have to turn over the tapes. Now, what about the amendments? Three amendments you need to know. The 12th Amendment, the 22nd Amendment, and the 25th Amendment. Now, the 12th Amendment is the one time that we've really changed the Electoral College, and what it talks about is the fact that Electors used to always get two votes, and they would take two votes and put two names on a sheet of paper. They would count up all the votes. Whoever got first was president, whoever got second was vice president. Well, because of the election of 1800, the 12th Amendment was written because by 1800 you have political parties, and these political parties are always going to write the same two names down. So what they did was they said electors still get two votes, but you're going to vote once for president on an ace and on a separate ballot for vice president. So that's the 12th Amendment. Now. 22nd Amendment, we forgot to talk about this, it's not that hard to understand. 2-2, two, two, 22nd. And the 22nd Amendment essentially happened uh, because FDR ran for the presidency four times. He was the only president to do so. He broke Washington's tradition. So the 22nd Amendment says that you only get two terms of office. Now you might be thinking that means you can only be president for eight years. In fact, you can be president for a grand total of 10 years. Um, if something were to happen to President Obama and Biden were to step in, you know, past the halfway point of Obama's term, that would not count for Joe Biden. Now, if Joe Biden uh, assumed the office of the presidency tomorrow, then this term would count for him because this, we're not even at the halfway point of, of Obama's presidency. But uh, his, his second term, excuse me. So the way the 22nd Amendment works is you can really only be president for two terms, uh, but you can be for a grand total of 10 years if two of those terms is you were the, two of those years you were a vice president and you stepped up and you uh, assumed the president's role uh, for the last two years. So that's the 22nd Amendment. 25th Amendment, we'll talk about uh, a little bit on Thursday, but that's really essentially saying that if the, if the president dies or is incapacitated or steps down, the vice president becomes the president. It does not say that in the Constitution. It was a big deal when Harrison died and they didn't know if, if Tyler should be president or not. The 25th Amendment said once and for all that the vice president becomes president, it also says two other things. It says that if there's a vice presidential vacancy, the president nominates a new vice president who has to be confirmed by the House and the Senate. And it also says in the 25th Amendment that if the president is doing something that the vice president and the majority of the cabinet don't like, the president can be removed. And this is an impeachment. The vice president with working with the rest of the cabinet, uh, cabinet secretaries can remove the president. If you get a majority of the cabinet secretaries and the vice president, you can remove the president. Okay, see you next time.